This week's lesson is focused on Jacob, Israel. At one point, Jacob, the supplanter, had believed that he deserved all things to come his way. However, now, on his own and on the run, he realizes that they weren't his for the taking. The blessings were God's for the giving. And Jacob will learn this the hard way. First, let's go back to Genesis 28. Verse 10 says, Then Jacob departed from Beersheba and went towards Haran. Verse 11, He came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. Two crucial facts are mentioned in verse 11. The first one is a certain place and the other phrase, the sun had set. On the first point, certain place, the word place is repeated five times in this chapter. It's the spot where Jacob spent the night. It is also referred to as the land, this land. And Jacob, in awe of the dream about the ladder from heaven, explained, this place is none other than the house of God. This place is the gate of heaven. That's verse 17. He called the place Bethel, which means the house of God. He then makes a bargain with God in verses 20 to 22. And he departs. As he departs from that place, the Bible says that the sun had set. And so Jacob's journey out of the promised land is described here as walking into the sunset. And for the next 14 years, his life of toil and struggle will be as it was living in the twilight. His uncle Laban will deceive him, a painful reminder of his own deception. But God throughout these years will continue to be faithful to his promise. And he blesses him with children and herds of animals. Eventually, he ran away in fear of his father-in-law. But distress awaits him because Esau is coming with 400 men to meet them. His fear of him is palpable and he turns to his only help. And in chapter 32 of Genesis, verse 9, Jacob on his knees prays, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, Yahweh, who said to me, return to your country and to your relatives, and I will prosper you. Verse 10 says, I am unworthy of all the loving kindnesses and all the faithfulness to which you have shown your servant. For my staff, only I cross this Jordan. Now I have become companies. Verse 11, deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Israel, for I fear him. Deliverance came in the middle of the night with a mysterious man who wrestled with him until daybreak. The man then blessed him and changed his name to Israel. The man said to Jacob, Your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with divine beings and human and have prevailed. The new name Israel, Yasha, describes his struggle to prevail. And it's crucial to note that this wrestling and prevailing took place just as the sun was rising. And so Jacob has moved out of his twilight years, is now on the promised land, and it's been given a new name. Genesis 32, verse 31, Now the sun rose upon him just as he crossed over that spot, and he named 
Peniel, which means I have seen the face of God. I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been preserved. Please also note the name Jacob, Yaakov, is not just supplanter. It also means crooked. However, the name Israel can also be read Yashael. The Hebrew word Yasha means straight, honest, honorable, law abiding. In biblical usage, it also means righteousness, God fearing. The names in the ancient Jewish world carried a very important weight. A name spoke of a person's character, his deeds, his identity. And for a person to be given a new name meant a change in their identity. And thus, we begin to understand the meaning of this amazing transformation in Jacob's life. Israel is the one whom God makes straight as opposed to being crooked and uneven. In Genesis 33, we witness the beautiful scene of reconciliation between Jacob and Esau. Esau, who brought 400 armed men to this meeting, obviously didn't have a peaceful intention. Everything suddenly changed. During this encounter, they both wept, kissed, and reconciled. Then they began talking to each other. Beautiful scene. And note Jacob's speech. Go through it. Very polite. And God is mentioned in every sentence, while Esau does not mention God at all. The attitudes are completely different. While Esau says, I have plenty, Jacob states, I have everything. Esau speaks of wealth, while Jacob speaks of sufficiency. You see, Jacob has come a full circle. In Genesis 35, God calls him back to Bethel, where he exited last. At Bethel, he called upon his family, and I read verse 2 of chapter 32, Put away the foreign gods which are among you, purify yourselves, and change your garments. Verse 3, And I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the days of my distress, and has been with me wherever I have The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, has become the God of Israel. What an amazing journey. What an amazing God.